Well, hello everyone. This is another episode of Someone You Should Know, and it'll just be me this time as far as Elizabeth not me with me, and we know we haven't got out as many of these in the last few weeks um, as normal, but we have a fantastic uh, guest today, and I'm going to introduce him to you in just a moment. I'll tell you his name right up front is Justice Parker. But, um, you know, our message on the seven mountains, the seven mountain mandate is really, uh, it's not that uh, new of a message in the sense that it just goes back to Jesus' original first message. Mm-hmm. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And if you don't function as salt, you're going to get trampled by the area you don't function on. And if you don't bring light, darkness will rule. And we know that there's nowhere that that is more evident than in the mountain of government. So today, who we have with us is Justice Thomas Parker, Supreme Court Chief Justice of the state of Alabama. And he is a fellow kingdom lover, a lover of God. And we are are so excited to have him today. We're going to hear a little bit about his journey and, and then... At the end, we're going to just ask him to pray for some of you who might be feeling a nudge, a call for what we call the mountain of government. So, Justice mm-hmm. Parker, well, I'll give you shake hands here. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good uh, to have you uh, with us, and I'll just get, let you uh, greet the folk that are watching us as well. Yes, it's a wonderful opportunity to speak to you. We need to find what God's call is on our life and pursue it so that we can be used of him in his kingdom for his purposes. And I hope to explore that with our talk. Well, that is good. He got right right into it. And that's really what we what we want to hear. And really, um, with that, can I know to tell us your whole journey? Obviously, we don't have the time, but the significant parts of your journey, for instance, let me give you a specific question was. Um, your call and pull to the mountain of government, Supreme Court justice is where you're at now. Was this first uh, evidenced by a feeling of justice in your heart from young or a call from God or just describe to us? Really, my heart was involved in the first wave of the religious liberty defense that swept this country. And it's interesting, I've never seen anything written about it, but all of a sudden, attorneys all across the country with no connection whatsoever were filing the same type cases for religious defense. And that had to be a move of the Holy Spirit. That's approximately what years? Uh, That was in the 80s. Okay. And uh, out of that have risen major national uh, religious defense organizations, religious uh, universities, um, so many different organizations that did not exist at that time. It was just individual attorneys working at their call that they had had after God had burdened their heart. And so I was involved in that. And through that, we got to meet each other eventually and form some very nice networks that have continued even until today. Let me interrupt just a second. So religious defense, would that be about religious freedoms or pro-life or some combination? Uh, It was religious freedoms uh, was the emphasis at that time. Because there was, in the 80s, there was a sense that it was being highly encroached upon in in our nation. Is is that would be why there's sort of a, a response from believers? Well, at that point, we had a U.S. Supreme Court liberal dominated uh, majority that were really not even following the Constitution in trying to remove religion from society. And so there was a, a backlog, a, a, a flashback yeah. against that that was yeah. occurring through the Christian attorneys across the country. And would you call yourself a constitutionalist? Oh, yes, very much so. Okay. I, we get that I, out of the way right I on. have mine in, in my pocket. I carry it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's wonderful. Well, tell us just um, more about your process, how the Lord woke you up and called you, wh- whatever part you you're, uh, want to tell us today. Well, let me start by saying this. As a young man, 
as any young man, you get pulled on the issues of the day. Uh, those who talk and provide the speeches can really move a lot of people. But I, I found that I had to be governed by this maxim. Uh, the existence of the need is not evidence of the call. It's very good. I was involved in too many things that I was not called to. I had just seen a need. Yeah. And so once I learned the truth of, uh, what is it? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Yeah. I want that call knowing that not only is he calling me to that, but he also will do it. He'll be with you. He just wants you to say yes. I love it. Yeah. Well, I love that. And mm -hmm. if you didn't pick that up at first, is that he is presently Supreme Court Chief Justice in the state of Alabama. How many years have you been there? I've been on the Supreme Court for 19 years and Chief Justice for five. It's an elected position by the people. And let me ask you, like for those of you who are considering going into government, you have to understand if you're a Supreme Court Chief Justice of a state, God has called you very far. What do you feel when you're on the job? Do you feel abandoned by God, helped by God? Do you feel angels are attentive? Do you feel mm -hmm. warfare combination? Explain what it feels to you in the spirit just to be functioning there. Well, we know that God equips those he calls. Yeah. And I'm very aware that he is equipping me with something for the specific situation that I'm facing. Yeah. There you go. Um, I don't have to struggle trying to find my way through it. He's my dependable God. And you, and so you do feel like Holy Spirit is there, help is there, whenever you would be in a, whatever, you're arbitrating in a session or something, you, you feel like the Holy Spirit is there working, working with you. Yes. Now it's, it's Intense. one of the three branches of government. There's a huge number of employees and elected officials, a uh, huge budget. So there, there's a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces, and you need guidance to be able to handle all that. And I'm thankful that he is faithful to provide it. And um, part of uh, your journey, of course, is knowing the Lord. Tell us briefly just um, when you came to know the Lord, when you came, became a believer, a little bit about your family. You're married, your wife, just a couple of things like that. <laughs> uh, well, I will tell you that because of a wonderful uh, Sunday school teacher, I came to the Lord early in life. Um, but when I got to college, I drew away from that. Mm. Um, and um, maybe something you'll understand, I had a... Uh, international fellowship and studied abroad. Mm. Uh, and I began to get lonely mm. yeah. in a community where I didn't know the language perfectly uh, and nobody else could speak English back to me. So you were serving where? I mean, you were going to school where? In Sao Paulo, Brazil. Really? Yeah. Okay, I've been there. We've been there. Yeah, yeah. so um, I, f I found consolence in the large cathedrals there. They were empty and it was a wonderful quiet place to go and just sit before the Lord and pray. And it began to pull me back. And um, I will say that the relationship that the Lord set before me with now my wife yeah. helped draw me even deeper back. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And how many years have you been married? 42. Awesome. And you would say you came to the Lord like when it stuck for good at, at how long, how many years ago or at what age? Um, it was probably 43 years ago. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. good. And, and it's, it's revolutionized my life. Um, here I was just an attorney in private practice. And once I made that commitment, I saw my 
path beginning to change dramatically in directions that I had never envisioned, never desired. Wow. And especially uh, a judgeship that was never on my radar. Until you came to the Lord, then it's kind of a, a redirecting. Even after I came to the Lord, yeah. it was not on my radar. He had to sovereignly move me into it. Well, that, so, so you became an attorney before you knew the Lord. Yes. And so you being there is when he then began to do the, the work on your heart and began to make uh, his ways clear and clear uh, before you. But even the path that I took for education was clearly his hand in retrospect. Mm 